Good morning and welcome to our Worship at Home online resource. We're glad that we could still gather as church this Sunday morning with you. Each week we'll continue to gather this way with all online resources available on the Methodist Church in Ireland website. My name is Tom McKnight and I am the minister of Donegadee Methodist Church and this past Wednesday, I had the honor of being installed as president of the Methodist Church in Ireland. The theme for my presidential year is Grace Without Limits. And the sp specific theme of our service today is the grace in which we stand. We'll begin the service with these words from Psalm 116. What can I give the Lord for all the good things he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation, and I will pray to the Lord. In the year 1930, Harry Emerson Fosdick wrote a hymn for the dedication of the Riverside Church in New York City, where he was the minister. The hymn reflects the challenges of that particular time, such as the rise of Nazism in Germany but it also speaks to the entirely different challenges we're facing today in these difficult times. It is written as a prayer, and it will be our opening prayer today. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, on your people pour your power. Crown your ancient church's story. Bring her bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Heal your children's warring madness. Bend our pride to your control. Shame our wanton, selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom. Grant us courage, lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Lo, the hosts of evil round us scorn your Christ, assail his ways. Fear and doubts too long have bound us. Free our hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of these days. Amen. The Apostle Paul uses the word grace 80 times in his letters, which is two out of every three times it's used in the entire Bible. Our scripture reading today includes one of those uses when he refers to this grace in which we stand. It is Romans chapter five, verses one to eight. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
When I was 17, in a hotel room in New York City, I received the greatest gift of grace I could possibly receive. Grace is sometimes defined as God's unmerited favor, but today I want to simply define it as God's gift, a gift we could not earn, a gift we do not deserve. For several years, probably since I was 13 or 14, I had considered myself an intellectual disbeliever. Today, I would probably have called myself a church-going atheist. I went to church because my family went to church, but I could not accept that God was real or that he could care for me. But the gift I received that night in that hotel room in New York City is the one Paul calls justification by faith, or as the Living Bible puts it, the gift of being made right in God's sight by faith in his promises. I was in New York as part of a tour of a youth choir from my church in Dallas a choir not unlike the old Glen Gormley Youth Choir of Irish Methodism. My church was one where God seemed real, at, at least to the people around me, but not to me. I could see that something was different about them. They seemed to talk to God all the time. They seemed to rely on God wherever they were. They seemed to believe God was real, and they acted on it. And I wanted whatever that was for my own life. The problem was that I could not accept it intellectually. I firmly believed in a closed view of the universe. Like many atheists, materialists, and so-called humanists today, I believed that there was no possibility of the existence of anything except for matter and energy, which were both forms of the same thing. The choir tour took us up from Dallas through Michigan into Canada and back down into New York. And in New York City, when most of the choir members had gone out to sing in some impromptu concert. I stayed behind in the hotel. And there that night, I surrendered my intellectual pride and accepted both God's existence and the gift he offered me through faith in his son. Up until that point, my mind was what I, I sometimes referred to as a jumble. My thoughts came to be a hundred a second, seemingly from every direction. I remember trying to figure out what it must be like for in other people's minds. Were, were they like me? Were their minds jumbled? I asked my friends at church and they said, no, their minds weren't jumbled. And, and it puzzled and surprised me. And so I, I really, wanted whatever it was they had. But it was only after I received that first gift of grace that I discovered another gift, the gift of peace with God. Amazingly to me, because of the new relationship with God that began that night, this mental jumble disappeared. And even now, almost 50 years later, it has not come back. There are many words Christians use to try to describe this peace. Sometimes we call it joy. Sometimes we call it love. But there is no way to explain it to someone who doesn't have it, who hasn't experienced it. While those who do have it, those who do experience, 
know what you're talking about regardless of what word you use. It is truly the peace of God that passes all understanding. I believe that people especially need that peace today in, as the hymn says, the living of these days. I fear that many today have their minds filled with their own mental jumble. I fear that many today are locked in mental turmoil because of the coronavirus pandemic and lockdown. I firmly believe that many today need the peace that comes as a gift from God, a gift that can be yours when you put your trust in him. And there's another gift Paul mentions, which always seems strange to me. The gift of the hope of sharing the glory of God in the midst of our sufferings. It always seems strange, that is, until now. Now I realize that is exactly the gift we need the gift of hope in the midst of our sufferings. We need the hope that in the suffering brought on by COVID-19, God is still at work. And we can see signs of that hope all around us. We can see that hope of God at work whenever a medical professional opts to work in a coronavirus ward despite the personal risk. We can see that hope of God at work whenever a person shops for a sheltering neighbor whom they hardly knew. We have seen that hope of God at work whenever we here in the UK have gone to our front doors on Thursday nights to clap for carers and the NHS. This is exactly the hope we need now. Hope of sharing the glory of God in the midst of of suffering. I did not know what was in store for my future that night in the hotel room in New York City, but I knew my future was from then on in God's hands. That is the grace in which we stand as Christians. God's grace is available to you today. Do you have the kind of intellectual pride I was talking about? Pride that reason and intellect will explain everything? God's gift of grace can overcome it. Is your mind a a jumble as mine was with thoughts coming from every direction? God's gift of peace can overcome it. Are you feeling hopeless because of the bizarre times in which we're living? God's gift of hope can overcome it. God's gifts can enable us to share God's glory in this crazy world. Paul sums it up like this. He said, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the grace in which we stand. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the grace you offer us in Jesus. We bring before you your church today, both here and throughout the world. We pray for those who are struggling to see you at work still in the midst of this pandemic. We pray for those who feel isolated in their faith because of the inability of our churches to meet for worship. Renew us, Lord, that we may be a living fellowship that depends not on buildings or gatherings, but on you. God of mercy, we pray for the nations of the world and especially for those areas where the virus is growing. We pray for people who feel under threat from their governments 
and governments who feel under threat from their people. Show us how to live together as one family and to bear each other's burdens. God of compassion, we pray for those who are ill or anxious at home or in hospital. We pray for those whose lives are filled with fear and despair. Draw near with your saving love and bring healing and hope. And we remember before you those who have died. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>